Well, thank you very much, and thank you to Byron. He is a star, and uh, I gave him my endorsement right from the beginning, and he'll always have my endorsement, and I was honored to have his. And uh, he's really a fantastic man who has a fantastic wife who I'll be introducing in a second. His wife is uh, just incredible, knows so much about exactly what you're all about, and uh, nobody knows it better. And I'm thrilled to be here in the birthplace of American independence with the proud patriots of the Moms for Liberty. And I want to thank Tiffany Justice. Really incredible job, Tiffany, wherever you may be. Tiffany, great job. And Tina Deskovich. Tina, thank you very much. Thank you. And Marie Rogerson. Marie, thank you. Thank you very much for the amazing job they've done building this organization into a grassroots juggernaut of 120,000 members in 45 states and growing every single day. And people are inspired. And you had a lot of people that are very much in support of you outside. I don't know if you know that or not. But you had a lot of people that are very much in support. I also want to recognize Bridget Ziegler. Bridget, thank you very much. Florida GOP, Christian Ziegler and Byron's wonderful wife. Where is Erica? Is she here? I hope she's right here someplace because she is an incredible person. Erica, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eric. Most importantly, let me say a very special thanks to every one of the amazing activists and citizen leaders here today. You have to be an activist nowadays because we're dealing with crazy people. <laughs> you have proven beyond all doubt that there is no earthly force more powerful than the love of a mother for her children. That's true. In school board races, PTA meetings, and town halls across the nation, you have taught the radical left Marxists and communists a lesson they will never forget. Don't mess with America's moms. Does that make sense? I know exactly what they're talking about. Don't mess. That's a powerful group. For seven years, you and I have been fighting side by side to rescue our country from the sinister forces who hate it. And frankly, they want to destroy it. Nobody gets it. Nobody knows why, but they want to. And I don't think they know why either, if you really want to know the truth. But they're very, very bad. Now we're approaching the most important battle of our lives. As we gather today, our beloved nation is teetering on the edge of tyranny. We know that. Our enemies are waging war on freedom and faith, on science and religion, on history and tradition, on law and democracy, on the family, on children, and on America itself, they want to destroy our country. As I said to you almost three years ago, standing at Mount Rushmore, remember that, how beautiful it was? They want to wipe out Mount Rushmore, too. Now they're going to have a hard time doing it. They don't like Mount Rushmore, but I love Mount Rushmore. <laughs> this left-wing cultural revolution is designed to overthrow the American Revolution. They want to demolish the legacy of America's founding in 1776 and its place. They want to force their sick creed of woke communism on every American man, woman, and child. You see it every day. But the people in this room will never let them do it, because we love our nation, we love our children, and we love our freedom. And as you know, the menacing specter of left-wing repression has been growing steadily for years, and there's never been anything like what's happened over the last three years. They took over our colleges and universities and then infiltrated our grade schools. They corrupted the media, although the media was quite corrupt to start off with. <laughs> and we've really exposed how corrupt they are. Can you imagine, with all of the millions and millions of dollars paid to the Biden family, so, so dishonest. No question about it. Corporations set up silently, quietly. Millions and millions of dollars pouring in from China, from Ukraine, from many other countries. And the press doesn't even want to write about it. What do you think would happen if that were me? Do you think they'd be writing a little bit? John Solomon's here, a great, great, talented person. And is he here? Is he in the room? 
He's an amazing writer. He should have gotten the Pulitzer Prize, by the way, because he got Russia, Russia, Russia correct. So did Greg Jarrett and others, many others. But uh, they gave it to the people. They got it wrong. Now we're suing them to have the prizes, if you call them prizes, because they don't mean so much anymore, taken away, because they got it exactly wrong. But uh, they've been watching this, and they've been seeing it happen. They've been seeing it grow, and we have to stop it. They threw open our borders. They installed radical left judges to subvert our Constitution. They tried to take down a presidency with hoaxes and witch hunts, but they failed. They failed. We had a tremendous success. And now we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again and finish the job we started. Joe Biden has weaponized law enforcement against his political opposition. The greatest abuse of power in American history by far. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. Under the Biden Department of Injustice and the FBI, they've even targeted you, patriotic parents at school board meetings. They go after you. It's not even believable. But Antifa, BLM, other groups, corrupt thugs, they don't go after at all. They take a look at these corrupt thugs labeled you as national security threats. They look at you as, as corrupt. It's not even believable. And the really corrupt people get away with it, including crooked Joe Biden, because he's the most corrupt of all. Look at the money they've taken in. But the drug cartels and the human, human traffickers and domestic terrorists, who, by the way, are pouring into our country right now as we speak. Hard to believe. We had the safest border in history. Now we have the worst border maybe in the entire world, because I don't think any country's ever had a border like this. What's happening in our country is very, very terrible. The radical left is even slandering Moms for Liberty as a so-called hate group. You're a hate group. You are a hate. You hate your children. You hate everybody. You're a hate group. Can you imagine? Moms for Liberty, hate group. I'm telling you, these people are sick. But Moms for Liberty is no hate group. You are joyful warriors. You are fierce, fierce patriots. You're not the threat to America. You're the best thing that's ever happened to America. Joe Biden and the Democrat communists are the threat to America. And together, we're going to throw them out of office on Election Day of 2024. I believe it's going to be the most important election in the history of our country. And I think if we don't win that election, it could be that our country is finished. It's gone. You'll never get it back. As Biden corrupted the Department of Injustice to cover up his own crimes, he recently ordered his top political opponent arrested. Oh, wow, that's me. That's me. <laughs> I was arrested. And every time my polls go up, we're leading them by a lot. Byron knows that. We're leading them by a lot. Every time they go up, they get more and more radicalized and vicious. But right in the middle of a presidential election, Biden is losing very badly, and they had him arrested me. And by the way, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, Trump, you know, he brings a lot of, a lot of tumult. We bring tumult because they come after us. If anybody else ever took my place, they would be attacked, and they'd probably leave office within a matter of moments because they'd be attacked the same way, maybe even more viciously, because it turns out with me, I did nothing wrong. They go after people that did nothing wrong. They use disinformation and everything else. But uh, if anybody else was standing up here or the front runner, you know, if I was in third place, fourth place, or wasn't running, there wouldn't be anything. They would have said he's one of the most honest presidents we've ever had, but <laughs> they wouldn't be interested in that. A friend of mine said, you know, if I ever went under the scrutiny that you have, he's a very successful guy, he said, they would have gotten me on hundreds of things. Remember with me? They got me on nothing. They got me on nothing. And all of the things that they do have, it's like the pundits are saying, wow, that's nothing. But I take it for you, this is a continuation of the greatest witch hunt of all time, and it's been going on since I came down the escalator with our great Future First Lady, that was, uh, she says hello to everybody. And she believes in what you're doing so much. And does she love her baby, who is now a very tall 17-year-old <laughs> baby?
But she loves uh, that young man so much, and you, just like you do, you love your you love your children so much. I understand it very well. Thank you very much. She really is. Uh, she's a great person. Great, uh, got a great spirit. She can't believe what's happening. She says, "Are you sure you want to do this? This is these people are, are crazy." But. What they're doing is a primary, it has a very primary purpose, and that's election interference. They want to interfere with the election. They rigged the presidential election of 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. We're not going to allow it. Never forget, our enemies want to stop us because we are the only ones who can stop them. We're the ones that are going to stop them, and we will stop them. If the corrupt, persecutions of our people succeed, they will complete their takeover of this country and destroy your way of life forever. And I don't believe there'll be any coming back. You know, the way we say, you'll come back. You can't come back. Once they get their claws in there, you won't come back. Maybe in a hundred years, you won't come back. They want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. They want to silence me. Oh, would they like me to be silenced? They would do anything to silence me, because I will never let them silence you. It's very simple. In the end, and you know this better than anyone, they're not after me, they're after you, and I'm just standing in their way, and I will continue to stand in their way. Ultimately, the radical left is coming after all of us because they know that our allegiance is not to them. Our allegiance is to our country, to our children, and to our Creator. And I promise you this, if you put me back in the White House, their reign will be over and America will be a free nation once again. So important. It's uh, — I can't tell you — in 2016, I said that's going to be the most important election ever. 2020, we thought we won. I mean, I didn't talk about the election too much because I thought we — I thought we won that election so easy we were going to win it. And uh, what they did was uh, beyond any belief. They used COVID in order to cheat. But I thought you, we were just going to win, so we didn't talk about it. And a lot of the things that we said, like we're creating a strong border — you know, it's very interesting. I was telling people that in 2016, the border was, like, the biggest issue because our border was horrible. Nothing compared to how bad it is today. But I solved the problem. We created the safest border in the history of our country. And so it wasn't even talked about during 2020. I said, you know, I did such a good job. I talked — I talked everybody out of discussing the number one thing, the border. I shouldn't have done such a good job. Then we could have talked about the border. But there was a, nobody wanted to talk about it. They said, there's no problem with the border. But despite the demented persecution of our movement, we are getting stronger and stronger by the day. People of common sense. Just this week, the Quinnipiac poll found us beating Joe Biden right here in the battleground state of Pennsylvania, where we do great. We do great. In my opinion, well, I don't know. It's for Trump. It's for Republicans. But this is an absolute uh, Republican stronghold that Republicans have a very hard time winning because a lot of bad things go on. But we are just absolutely crushing them with independence. 51 just came out this morning. 51 percent to 37 percent independence. They were saying, do you think Trump can win independence? Well, we're winning independence in some places by 25 points. And they think, do you think Trump can win suburban women? Suburban women. You know what they want? We got a lot of suburban women. You know what they want? They want peace. They want low taxes. They want good education. They don't want wars, these stupid wars that go on forever, killing everybody, destroying our country. Last week, I was also very proud to receive the endorsements of many incredible Pennsylvania leaders. I got them just about all, including warriors. These are warriors. Congressman Mike Kelly, Dan Muser, a great guy. These are two great guys. Another one, Scott Perry, fighter. He fights like hell. Guy Ressenthaler. Guy is uh, unbelievable. John Joyce, former congressman. Fred Keller, 
and Ambassador Carla Sands. These are all incredible people. They are really — and they're courageous people. If patriots like all of us here today remain united, we will be unstoppable. We're unstoppable. There are many more of us. Look, who wants policies where they say open borders, where we have people coming in from all places that nobody even wants to discuss? They say, you shouldn't say that, sir. It's not nice. But who wants open borders? Who wants no voter ID? Who wants high taxes? Who wants high interest? Nobody can buy a house now because interest rates are so high. We were energy independent a little while ago. Now we're begging for energy from Venezuela. We will put parents first, we will put children first, and we will put America first again. And we had an incredible presidency, four years. And just think of what we already achieved in four — those four incredible years. As president, I implemented Every Student Succeeds Act to kill the use of Common Core forever. So important. No longer can it be used as a condition for federal funding. They can't use it. As part of the Trump tax cuts, I gave every parent the right to spend $10,000 a year tax-free to send your child to the public, private, religious school, or any other school of your choice. That was a big thing. Didn't sound like that big. Based on, I thought that was a big thing. It didn't sound that big. Just. I mean, some other things have gotten bigger. Okay, let's save the money. Let's not do it anymore. I thought it was a big thing. To protect free speech, I signed an executive order to force public colleges to honor students' First Amendment rights, or else lose millions and millions of dollars in funding. I mean, you see these places, they get millions of dollars. And then one of you, or a conservative person, or a person with common sense goes to speak, and they don't allow them to speak, but they take the government. So we took that away from them. We don't. If they do that, we don't pay them. It's amazing how welcome everyone was at these universities after I'd signed that. Three years ago, in September of 2020, I proudly signed the world's very first ban on critical race theory, vanquishing those racist trainings from the federal government long before anyone else had even heard of the term. Most people had never heard of the term to counter the left's heinous lies about American history. I also created the 1776 Commission to promote patriotic education for our youth. Because we want our children to love America as much as we love America. When the rioters and thugs came to tear down the statues of our great heroes in Washington, I immediately signed an executive order stating that anybody who even lightly defaced a federal monument or statue would get 10 years in federal prison. And that doesn't mean 10 years equals two months. It means 10 years, a full 10 years. It was amazing how that stopped. Do you remember how quickly it stopped? It stopped instantaneously. <laughs> to combat the anti-American radicals and provide positive examples for our youth, I announced the construction of the National Garden of American Heroes, a vast outdoor park featuring statues of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Betsy Ross, Benjamin Franklin, Susan B. Anthony, Frederick Douglass, and other great Americans, really great Americans. We were going to put it down. We're starting with 100, and then we'll end up with a lot more than that. We were going to have committees pick the first 100, and it would have been really something special. Joe Biden canceled the National Guard like an American-hating socialist would. He also canceled the Keystone Pipeline, if you remember that one. That was a beauty. First day, canceled the Keystone Pipeline. 48,000 jobs and something that would have been fantastic for energy. I will bring all of that back, and I will now be even bigger and more magnificent in terms of the garden. We will have something that will be really magnificent and something that you'll love and you'll visit. and really something that our country needs. We need it for our spirit. We need it for our soul. I totally transformed the federal judiciary, appointing nearly 300 justices and judges, and three great Supreme Court justices to interpret the law and Constitution as written.
You know, many presidents never get the opportunity to appoint a Supreme Court justice. I had three. They are going. They are, they are not happy about that. And maybe we'll get three or four more. Can you imagine? Let's get seven. Let's have, let's have seven or eight or maybe even nine. And yesterday, as an example, they ruled such a big ruling to set our country back on a merit-based system of education. You mean that we'll have report cards again? I don't know, maybe some of you do this, but how about these schools where you don't get marks? The kids come in, oh, how are you doing in school? I don't know. <laughs> are you a good student? Yeah, I guess so. How do they, how do they compare you with the other students? I don't know, they don't give us any marks. We just sit there, we finish. Does, any, does anybody in this room have that system? I don't think so. But a lot of people do, a lot of schools do. In other words, what they did yesterday, if you've worked hard, gotten fantastic marks, done well on all of the other various things that you have to do well on, somebody that hasn't done nearly as well, who perhaps has not worked as hard, will not be taking your place on a school, college, or university roster any longer. Today, the Supreme Court, this is today, Today, the Supreme Court also ruled that President Biden is not allowed to wipe out hundreds of billions and perhaps trillions of dollars in student loan debt, which would have been very unfair to the millions and millions of people who paid their debt through hard work and diligence. Very unfair. That was just a way for a crooked guy. He's crooked as a $3 bill. I used to say $2 bill, but they've made a few of them. Now he's a crooked guy. We have a crooked president. We have a corrupt president, very corrupt. But this was a way of trying to buy votes. That's all it was. They also gave religious liberty, as you know. You saw the decisions today, a tremendous win. Religious liberty got a tremendous win today. This was a big, this was a big two days. And there were other things, too. This was a big two days. They said these are things that will never happen, and they've happened. And uh, people are very impressed. Not to mention the fact that almost exactly one year ago, they ruled against Roe v. Wade, giving pro-lifers a tremendous power to negotiate and moving back all of this information and vote to the states, which legal scholars and many others always felt that's where it should be. That's where it should be, back to the States. And now people that believe in life will be able to stop the radical left Democrats from killing babies in their fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and even after birth. You saw that with the governor of Virginia, the last governor, the previous governor of Virginia, where he talked about the baby is born, and then you sit down and you discuss with the mother what you want to do with the baby. The baby's been born. They talked about after the baby's born, not just from the ninth month, after the baby was born, would you decide to kill the baby? So we would be, uh, this is an amazing situation because they are really the ones that have the radical position. And hopefully the Republicans are going to learn how to deal with this issue and talk about it. And if you do, you're going to have a tremendous victory in your hand. If you don't, you're going to have some problems, but this is an amazing thing because they're the radical ones. They're willing to kill a baby in the fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth and ninth month and even after birth. That's called radical. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. They did a poll recently and it's like a very tiny percentage. So they're really the radical ones. And by getting rid of Roe v. Wade, we've given tremendous negotiating power to the pro-lifers, tremendous. They didn't have any negotiating power at all. So this was a, an amazing thing. But the Republicans are going to have to learn how to speak on the subject, because if they don't, maybe they're not going to get the kind of votes they should get. They should be uh, really admired for what happened. But the Supreme Court gave us that. And bringing it back to the states is a big deal. But uh, when you look at it, the power of negotiation, you have a tremendous power. Before that, you had no power 
whatsoever. So uh, I congratulate all of you, because most of the people in the room feel that way. I congratulate all of you. In addition, we delivered the largest tax cuts and regulatory cuts in history. And likewise, we built the greatest economy in the history of the world. There has never been an economy like we built anywhere in the world. We were lapping China. We were, you know, China was supposed to overtake us for many, many years. For decades, they were saying in 2018, China would overtake because of the population, 1.4 billion people. They were going to overtake. We created a juggernaut. They weren't even close. They were never, and they were heading in the wrong direction. Then we had the gift from China. The China virus came in, and we had to go a little bit different way. But still, we gave over a stock. But we did a great job. We get very little credit for the job we did. We did an incredible job. Nobody knew what the hell it was. We did an amazing job with that, with the Regeneron and all the therapeutics and all of the things we did, the, the ventilators that we built, we became the king of ventilators, we were making them for every country and sending them out. We did such a good job. But uh, we handed over, despite all of that, all of that. Some people said they did it on purpose. I happen to think it was gross incompetence. I said it came from the Wuhan labs right from the beginning. If you remember, I took a lot of heat for that. Now they admit it came from the Wuhan labs. We were right about, they have a thing. Trump was right about everything. Sort of, we were just about right on everything. <laughs> And I hope we're not going to be right on what's happening in Ukraine, because there's some bad things happening there. And we have a man who's grossly incompetent, who doesn't have a clue. And we have to be very careful with World War III. We created the most secure border in U.S. history, built nearly 500 miles of border wall, got Mexico to give us free of charge, thank you, soldiers, to protect us. I said to them, you have to give us 28,000 soldiers. They laughed at me. I said, no, 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 you have to do that, because we have people pouring into our country. No, 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 we won't do that. I said, that's OK. We're going to put a 25 percent tariff on all goods being shipped, including the car business that you stole from the United States, 32 percent of our business. We're going to put a 32 percent tax or tariff on all of the cars and everything else you sell into the United States. And they said, uh, we would actually love to give you 28,000 soldiers. It would be a great honor, sir, to give you 28,000 soldiers. Would you like more? I think I could have had a lot more if I wanted them, but we didn't need it. We had it stopped. We negotiated. Remain in Mexico. That's another one we had to get from Mexico. Remain in Mexico. How do you like that one? Instead of remain in the United States, and that's the end of it. And terminated the ridiculous catch and release. That's where you catch them and release them into our country. They say, come back in four years, you're going to have a court case. Oh, OK, we'll come back in four years. They never come back. One percent come back. And those are the people that aren't the smartest of the group. <laughs> I fully rebuilt the U.S. military, created Space Force, defeated ISIS, and I brought our troops back home. And I was the first president, and that's one of the things about the suburban women. They don't want war. They don't want their kids killed in these stupid wars that nobody knows what we're doing. The rhinos and the Democrats, they love wars. They don't want their children killed in a war for a country that nobody ever heard of. What a horrible, horrible situation. We, what we did in the Middle East, as an example, we went in there, spent $10 trillion. Millions of people killed. I view both sides. Millions and millions of people killed. Obliterated the place. And what, what do we get? Nothing. It just keeps going. These wars cost probably close to $10 trillion and hundreds of thousands of lives on our side, millions of lives overall. Count the other side. But all of that was only the beginning. Here's just some of the bold agenda that I will immediately implement when we become the 47th President of the United States. When I, we, get back in the White House, I will totally obliterate the deep state. The deep state does exist, and they are bad. I will fire the rogue bureaucrats who weaponize the justice system, who's destroying our country. They are destroying our country, starting with every corrupt official who targeted Moms for Liberty and other patriotic parents. And I don't know if you watch and I don't know how many Catholics are in the room, but what they're doing, what they are doing to Catholics is nobody's ever seen anything like it. And then people go and vote for the Democrats. You're Catholic, you go vote for the Democrats. It's crazy. 
Uh, they got almost 50 percent of the vote last time. And I say, why would they do it? But in all fairness, they've never been brazen like they are right now. Nobody had any idea. They, they hate religion. They hate God. They hate God. This was all a big uh, pile of disinformation and misinformation. Uh, what they've done to religion is so horrible, horrible. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we all together win the presidency, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. It will be done within 24 hours. And it would have never started. That war would have never started if I were president. It would have never started. I spoke to Putin about it. I told him, can't do it, Vladimir. No, you can't do it. You know, they always say I was soft on Russia. He said, if you're soft on Russia, I'd hate to see a tough guy because, you know, I ended their pipeline, right? Nord Stream 2. Nobody ever heard of Nord Stream 2 until I came along. I said, nope, end it. End it. That was the biggest thing they've ever done. I ended it. Biden approved it, like, his first week in office. He let him do it. But he got a lot of money from Russia. Remember, the mayor of Moscow's wife paid him and his son. Hunter, there's a beauty. At some time, <laughs> at some time, does he look at his son and say, you know, the son thing just isn't working out? <laughs> he said his son is the smartest person he's ever known. I don't know. He's the smartest person I've ever known. Who? Hunter. Smartest person. Now, at some point, he's going to say, it's just not working out the way it's supposed to. <laughs> no, these are corrupt people. And, you know, I was always respectful of the office. I've, I've hit him very hard the last couple of weeks because, you know, when they indict their opponent, nobody ever thought that was possible. Who's very innocent? Most of these pundits, even the ones that hate me, say, that's not indictable. It's Presidential Records Act. It's a, it's a civil thing. Uh, the one in the DA in New York, they actually put people from the Justice Department into the local DA's office. They reviewed it. They said, that's not a crime. There's no crime there. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. But, you know, I was always modestly respectful, and in many cases, much more respectful because of the respect I have for the office of the presidency. And that happened, it happened for a long time, I would say, in terms of this country. I respect the office. I don't want to call him a crook and think, but now I say, he's a damn crook. He's crooked as hell, because they started this. They indicted the former president of the United States over bullshit, and, and so now I'm allowed to say it like it is. We have a corrupt president. We have a corrupt president. He's 100 percent crooked. He knows it. Well, he doesn't know it anymore. I don't think he does. I'm not sure he knew it even at the time. But they take money, they walk into these countries, and they say, you pay me $10 million, you pay me $5.1 million. You see the phone call the other night? I'm sitting here with my father. We want the money right now. And we're watching. And then the fake news doesn't want to report this, the conversation. Or the one where he said a billion dollars isn't going to Ukraine unless you get rid of the prosecutor. That's called quid pro quo. Not a perfect phone call that I made where you get impeached on a first. But we had great support from the Republicans in the House. I guess there were like 197 people. We had 197 votes against. And that's pretty good. That doesn't happen that much. It's got to happen more with Republicans. But they impeached me on a perfect phone call. This was a perfect call. This was a call that when people read it, a uh, number of people read it r early on, they said, that's not, that was a nice call. These people are destroying our country. We can't let them continue. But I always respected that office so much that as bad as I knew Biden was, as incompetent as he is, as dumb as he is, frankly, and he was dumb 25 years ago. And by the way, he doesn't have an age problem. He's got a competency problem. And he's got some other problem, because I know people that are 90 years old that are making a fortune. They're smart as they ever were. And this is not an age problem. This is a problem with something's going on. And, you know, we have nuclear weapons out there. Many countries now have nuclear weapons. And we have a man who's grossly incompetent leading us. This is the most dangerous time in the history of our country because of the power of weaponry. So I respected that office so much that I take it easy. Now, some people would say I didn't take it so easy. I took it easy. 
But the last two weeks, I haven't taken it easy, have I? Because he is a corrupt person, and we have a corrupt person leading our country. And one of the reasons, uh, China, they opened up military bases. They're opening up military operations in Cuba, 90 miles off our coast. And nobody even talks about it. Nobody even talks about it. That's the most serious threat that I can imagine. And nobody talks about it. And the press doesn't talk about it because they know Biden is very vulnerable. And they know he took a lot of money from China. Got millions and millions of dollars from China. Millions. Just the other night on the phone call, they talked about it. That was 5.1, but 10 million came in beyond that. And that's only the stuff they find out. And by the way, Jamie Comer and Jim Jordan and that whole group, they're doing a great job of exposing this corruption. But the fake news media back there, they don't want to talk about it. It's not even believable. They don't want to talk about it. But I think they're going to have to, because at some point, they have to have some credibility. You know, their, their numbers down are about as low as anybody's ever seen. When I came in, the media was highly respected. Now the media is respected about less than almost any group. And I consider it an honor to have exposed the media as being corrupt, because it's a very important thing, I think. Because they're the ones that keep our country honest by fair reporting. But when you don't report the kind of things that are coming out on Biden, the Biden crime family, uh, then everybody knows that you no longer have any credibility. That's why CNN is going out of business. They're virtually going. They don't even know if it's saleable. I did a town hall a few weeks ago, and at the town hall, CNN town hall, you think that was fun? And, but I thought they were going to go a little bit more fair. That's why I did it. I assumed they were going to go fair because their ratings are so bad that maybe they were looking for credibility. But I did the town hall. They got among the highest ratings they've ever had. And you know what happened? They fired the head of CNN because of it. It's, see, this is what I mean. It's like April Fool's. Everything's the opposite. You get high ratings, and you give them a race. You get low ratings. It, the craziest thing, they fired him. The ratings were fantastic. And uh, they fired him because they thought I, frankly, did a good job of giving our position on things. They said, stop this show now. Stop it now. He's destroying you. He's killing you. He owns you. They said, AOC. She said, he owns you. He owns you. Stop the show. They end up firing the guy that, I think they said the highest ratings in 11 years. And they fired the guy that got those ratings. And he couldn't have been too smart. He should have said, I got the highest ratings. I want to, I want to raise. <laughs> but I'm the only candidate who can make this promise. I will prevent World War III. And I'm going to do it. I will do it. I know the players. I know all the players. They have respect for us. You wouldn't have had also, you wouldn't have had Russia, Ukraine. You wouldn't have had China talking about going into Taiwan. We did a fantastic job with Kim Jong-un. You know, I got along with him very well. The fake news said, it's terrible that he gets along with him. I said, really? It's not terrible. It's a very good thing. You know, it's a positive thing. But that was a big threat, and now it's becoming a big threat again. I will immediately terminate every open borders policy of the Biden administration. <laughs> to protect our children, we will remove every illegal alien gang member out of our country. And you know who's going to do it with us? The local police. Because the local police who have been brutalized by this group of thugs, the local police are phenomenal. And they know every one of the gang members. And they know them by their first name and their middle name and their last name and their nickname. Some of the nicknames you don't want to know about. And I will use Title 42, which they ended. Can you believe it? To end the child trafficking crisis by returning all trafficked children to their families and their home countries immediately. And very important for you, it's so dangerous, it's so dangerous in some of these cities. We will restore school safety. We're going to make, we're going to be very tough. These teachers are being beaten up. Children are being beaten up, too. But people are going in and just beating the hell out of our teachers, and nobody does anything about it. Thanks to Biden's heartless school closures and the radical left lie that school discipline is racist. Practically every week, there's a new video or 
something where it comes out about students or teachers being hit and whacked and just hurt so badly, thrown out windows. And I say, enough is enough. We have to stop it. We're going to stop it. Oh, it's going to be they'll, — they'll go after me, but we're going to stop it. And the only way you fight that kind of fire is with fire. You've got to be tough. And uh, it's — right now, these are out-of-control youths. These are really bad, bad young people. And we're going to stop it. And we're going to stop people from going into stores and robbing the hell out of them and walking out. And the policemen are afraid to do anything because the policemen are told, you're going to lose your job, you're going to lose your pension, you're going to do everything. And they're not allowed to act. They're going to be allowed to act. We'll protect them, and they're going to be allowed to act. There's not going to be any more of that. You have cities now that they can't rent a store because people go and just take everything they want, and they walk out. Nobody does anything, because everybody's afraid of — they're afraid of everything. And this is a country out of control. This is a country that's on its way to oblivion. I will completely overhaul federal standards on school discipline and juvenile justice to get violent monsters out of your children's classrooms and into reform schools or correction institutions. And that's also for their own good. In addition, I am proud to have laid out by far the most aggressive, most visionary plan to liberate our children from the Marxist lunatics and perverts who have infested our educational system. They're perverts. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content on our children. Just last week, test scores revealed the worst student achievement levels in reading and math in almost 50 years. Think of that. The worst — now, you have to understand, we spend two, three, four, five times more than other countries per student, more than anybody's ever seen. And by the way, I'll, I'll — it's not part of my remarks, but I'm going to make it part of you don't mind. I want to move our education system back to the States. So it's such an important thing. We're going to do it. We, st we were getting ready to start it, and then we had the COVID situation, and we had to work on that. That was a big deal. But we were getting ready to do it, but we're doing it. And uh, do you hear that, Erica? Wherever Erica may be. We're moving, uh, we're moving it back. And how could it get worse? So we spend far more a, per student than any other country, not even close. You look at Norway, and you look at, uh, by the way, China. You look at some of the educational systems that they have, and they're far superior, and they spend much less money. And I think the states are much more pinpointed. You can do a much better job. Uh, it's going to be, I think, a miracle what's going to happen. So we're at the bottom of almost every list. Out of 40, we're just about at 38, 39, or 40. So it's not like, gee whiz, uh, we don't want to screw up what we have. What we have is horrible. It doesn't work. We're going to move it all back to the States. We may have a little remnant, just to make sure everyone's speaking English or whatever it may be. You know, a little coordination, but it'll be 1 percent, 2 percent, but it's going to be very, very little. I'd say the office space will dwindle from 100 percent to 1 percent. If you need an office at all, we can have the office. We can put them in the Oval Office with me. You're not going to need much at all. Because I think the States will do a fantastic job. By the way, it'll be much less expensive. And we'll spend all that money on our students, and we'll bring them back. And we'll actually save money and reduce our debt, and lots of other good things can happen. But that's going to be very, very important. I hope everybody likes that, because otherwise I, I just blew it. Because they didn't have that in their remarks. You know, they didn't have that in my remarks. And I just said, you know, I want to say that. And the people said, oh, I don't know if it's going to be popular. I said, I don't care. I don't care. It's beautiful. It'd be beautiful. 
No, I met people backstairs. Backstage, I met people from Iowa, from South Carolina, from so many different — and they, they all love this. They just love it. These are incredible people. They'll rule it good. They love their children. They're going to make sure it's good for their children. And I just think that that is such a total no-brainer. It'll cost us half, and you'll get more money than you ever would have gotten because the money is just squandered and wasted by the federal government at levels that nobody's ever seen before. And you'll go from number 40 or number 38 or whatever you might be, you'll go conceivably to the top. We're very close to it. Under my leadership, the 1619 Project, you remember that, Beauty? Climate change extremists that are destroying our country. These are extremists, remember? The biggest threat we have, according to Biden, is climate change, because the ocean's going to rise over the next 200 years by one-eighth of an inch. But the fact that you have five countries out there with nuclear weapons pointed at us, that's not a threat. Can you imagine? That's not a threat. He said, the biggest threat is climate change. Our oceans will rise. Yeah, one-eighth of an inch over the next 200 to 300 years, meaning you have a little more beachfront property. Okay, that's the way I feel. <laughs> the ridiculous 87 different genders the left says there are out there. Think of it. And we will out. We were going to cut it out. We're going to get it out. We are going to be pressing three basic things plus. Reading, writing, and arithmetic. We'll be back. Reading, writing, and arithmetic. I hope the fake news doesn't say I'm old-fashioned. I hope they don't say I'm old-fashioned. But we have to bring our country back, the Marxism, fascism, communism, and the radical left socialism being preached in our children's classrooms all over. I mean, all over, beyond the classroom, our military, very dangerous. I ended it in the military. I ended all of the things in the military. As soon as they came, they came back, they put it all back in. They were paying people $500,000 a year to teach the military how to be woke. And I ended it all and uh, just incredible. But radical left socialism is being preached all over the place. It's, uh, it's just terrible. And in many ways, it now resembles established religion. What they're trying to do is really imitate, but in a much more vicious fashion, and something that's so bad for our country, established religion. The Marxist left and other lunatics preaching radical ideology have become a cult with their own creeds and their own mantras and their own rituals. Instead of taking children to church, they believe in taking children to drag shows. You see what's happening? Let's not go to church today, darling. Let's go to a drag show. Instead of teaching them to say their prayers, they teach them to recite their pronouns. You know about the pronoun thing, whatever that's all about. What is that all about? For any public schools that are engaged in these militant and country-destroying practices, I will instruct the DOJ to pursue them as violators of the Establishment Clause and the Free Exercise Clause of our Constitution. To vigorously enforce yesterday's Supreme Court ruling, I will eliminate all diversity, equity, and inclusion programs across the entire federal government. And I will direct the DOJ to pursue civil rights claims against any school, corporation, or university that engages in unlawful racial discrimination. We will restore a society based on equality, liberty, and merit. We're back with the merit. Can you believe this? This happened yesterday. Merit. You get good marks, you get in. You get bad marks, you maybe have to go someplace else. Furthermore, I will implement massive funding preferences for all states and school districts that make the following revolutionary reforms in education. Abolishing teacher tenure for grades K through 12 so we can remove bad teachers. Don't we want to get rid of bad teachers? Are there any bad teachers in the room? Could you please raise your hand if you're a bad? Anybody bad? I don't think we have too many in this room, I'll tell you. But we have a lot of bad teachers. And the problem is you can't get them out. You know that. We have, you have teachers that you work with that you can't get them out. You know how bad they are. We're going to get them out. 
because being a teacher is like the most important thing. It's so important. It's so incredible what you do. It's so important. You have so many teachers, and, and some are so incredible, and some are bad. And if they're not good, we have to get them out. Adopting merit pay so we can reward the great teachers. Implementing complete curriculum transparency so that parents have the right to see 100 percent of the material their children are being taught in school. Next time. And very importantly, adopting a program of universal school choice. Everybody wants school choice. At the same time, I refuse to abandon our public school systems as leftist-dominated systems. They're leftist-dominated, or, or much worse than that. You see what's going on with — and it's really the heads of unions and others that are just destroying the system. And it came out very much during COVID. Uh, with the decisions that were being made, and it was very, very sad to watch and very bad for our country. We must continue the noble fight that you are waging to take back school boards all across this country. And we will not be allowing the FBI and DOJ to attack you as you make your complaint to school boards, okay? I mean, they were arresting — they're arresting people that go in and want to have good education for their children, in addition to provide even more accountability. I will fight for the direct election of school principals by parents, so that if you have a lousy principal and you got some beauties out there, but if you have a bad principal who's not getting the job done, the parents will, under the Trump administration, be allowed to vote to fire that principal to select someone who will do a great job. Such a big deal. That's a big deal. You have a bad principle, it's not going to work out. This will be the ultimate form of local control and parental rights. If you would have thought that as a politician — can you believe I'm a politician? I can't get over it. I never thought I'd say it. But, you know, as a politician, that I'm always saying, I will give you back parental rights. Parental rights? You think you'd have parental rights? It's unbelievable what they do to your children, what they want to do to you. They want to take your children away from you and, in many cases, mutilate your child and not even get your approval. I will also take historic action to defeat the toxic poison of gender ideology, to restore the timeless truth that God created two genders, male and female. On day one, I will sign an executive order instructing every federal agency to cease the promotion of sex or gender transition at any age. They're not going to do it anymore. I will declare that any hospital or health care provider that participates in the chemical or physical mutilation of a minor youth no longer meets federal health and safety standards, they will be terminated from receiving federal funds effective immediately. And I will ask Congress, just like I did with Right to Try — you know, Right to Try has been so good. Hopefully, nobody in this room is going to need it. But uh, what we did with Right to Try, we got it through Congress, and we took care of our vets through Congress. If they can't get good treatment and service, you go out, you get the treatment, and we pay. You get it locally from a local doctor, where we have all good negotiated rates. I know it's made such a difference, but Biden's let that lapse. Vets were waiting three, four, five, six months even to see a doctor. They'd be online for months, and then all of a sudden it became a terminal situation. Could have been solved by a prescription, could have been solved by a minor operation. But we did, and we got one other right for the vets, and we had to get this through Congress, and I'll get what we're talking about through Congress also. Uh, we had a lot of bad people in the VA, sadists, thieves, but the sadists, and they were beating up our great warriors who, honestly, were not in very good shape. And they were becoming elderly, and some elderly. And these were sadists that were beating the hell out of them, and we couldn't fire the people that were doing it. I got the right to fire whoever the hell I wanted. And they fired almost 9,000 sadists and thieves in the VA, and the people are so happy. We got a 92 percent approval rating in the VA. 
But I got it all through Congress. Right to Try is, was such a big success where you, uh, if you were terminally ill, they wouldn't give you a space-age drug, a drug that is showing really great signs of promise. They said, we can't do that, sir, because supposing it hurts them. They're terminally ill. They got a month to live. We can't do that because it may hurt them. But you know, the drug companies didn't want it. Politicians didn't want it. The insurance companies didn't want it. I got everybody to sign an agreement that will do it. You're not going to sue the government. You're not going to sue anybody. We're going to do it. The companies didn't want it because if somebody dies, they didn't want it on their record. They want to have, like, you know, something that works. I said, the ultimate is if it works when they're terminally ill. That's the ultimate. That'll look good. But we took that off. We have a separate category. And we got it signed. It was actually much more complicated than people would think. So now if a person's terminally ill, instead of going to Asia, Europe, wherever they may go, or going home to die because they have no money to go to Asia and Europe, most of them would just go home and die. They're able to use these incredible new bio drugs and different things that are coming along the line that won't be approved for another four or five years. We cut the time period down in half, by the way. It used to be 12. Now it's four or five or six. We cut it down. That was a big thing. But they're able to use them. And people, thousands and thousands of people are living now that would have been dead. And in many cases, living totally cured. Because some of this stuff really worked. I said, I told you it might be good for you. But some of it really worked. So thousands of people, we had to get that through Congress. We did. And I'll get this through Congress. I'll ask Congress to send a bill to my desk prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. We're going to get that. <laughs> tell me a congressman. Tell me a congressman or woman that's not going to approve that child. We want no more child mutilation. Well, I'm against that, sir. I'll have to vote against that. I don't think so. You know what? I'll show you a defeated congressperson if that happens. That shouldn't be too tough. I will direct the relevant agencies to investigate whether big pharma and big hospital systems have illegally marketed puberty blockers and other unapproved hormone treatments. And if so, the corporations responsible will be brought to justice. And using my authorities under Title IX, I will keep men out of women's sports. That's one. I've been on that one for a long time. Everyone said, sir, don't mention it. It's not politically correct. I said, that's OK. What do we do that's politically correct? The biggest things, in many cases, they're not politically correct. But that one, men participating in women's sports. You know, I asked uh, for a couple of little examples. The swimmer from the University of Pennsylvania won the national championship great after setting school records for women's times in the 50-meter free, the 100-meter, 200-meter, 500-meter, 1,000-meter, and 1,650-meter. In New Zealand, the transgender weightlifter shattered four national records, ding, to qualify for the women's Olympic team, beating the second-place finisher by 42 pounds. That's a lot. You know, when you think that the weightlifting record stood for 18 years, and they'd put a quarter of an ounce here and a quarter of an ounce at the end of the bar, and they'd go in there, and they'd lift. This guy comes along. Ying. Have you lifted before? No, not really. <laughs> not really, I haven't. OK. <laughs> you know, it's so demeaning to women. It's such a horrible thing. A track runner became the national champion in 400-meter hurdles while claiming there was absolutely no advantage to being trans. And this was a runner that only ran a little bit. In Canada, a 37-year-old cyclist set a world record in the woman's sprint, despite the fact that she was biologically a male. And uh, the record was massive. There are now dozens, if not hundreds, of transgender athletes competing in the NCAA sports. And it's totally unfair to women. It's very uh, — it's an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment. I actually said that uh, if this stays, and I won't let it stay, I will leave the presidency to become a woman's basketball coach. <laughs> and I'm not a big fan of LeBron James at all, but I would say, LeBron, <laughs> would you ever think of becoming a woman? I'd like to get you and four of your friends. 
We only need that because we don't need much of a bench. No, we don't need a bench. But I want to get you and some of your friends, and uh, we want to go for the Olympic goal. Can you imagine that? We would win it quite easily. I'd be the greatest women's basketball, probably the greatest coach. I would be the greatest coach in history. There'd be no coach like Trump. Coach Trump, you're the greatest that ever lived. Thank you. Boom. Boom. How about the dunk? Boom. I'm also going to take very aggressive action to finally reclaim our higher education system from the Marxists and the Communist left. These fascists will no longer be allowed to rule the lives of our children and no longer be allowed to take away the authority of their loving parents. They can't do that. That's what they're trying to do, and that's what they're being successful in many cases in doing. As I announced several months ago on day one, I will fire the radical left accreditation groups that have allowed our colleges to become dominated by Marxist maniacs and freaks. They are. They're maniacs. We will then accept applications for new accreditors who will impose real standards on colleges and universities once again. We're going to have real standards, including defending American heritage and Western civilization, protecting free speech, and removing all of the wasteful Marxist DEI bureaucrats who are driving up tuition costs and destroying our students and their minds. And I will not give one penny to any institution that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate from kindergarten through college. And as most of you know, I have opposed mandates from day one, unlike some other people. I will also continue my long record of standing up to Big Pharma by creating a special presidential commission to investigate what is causing the decades-long increases in child diseases, autoimmune disorders, <laughs> autism, obesity, infertility, and other chronic health problems. We're going to get to the bottom of it. We're going to find out. Something's happening out there, and it's not good. Just as I did for four years, I will fully uphold the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment, I fought for it so hard and kept it very strong. I will defend innocent life. I will protect our Constitution. And I will once again appoint rock-solid conservative judges in the mold of justices. Antonin Scalia and the very great Clarence Thomas, who they're after. They're after him. But he'll handle it. And I'm also proud to say that, as President, I was able to win the bids for the 2026 World Cup and the 2028 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles. That's a big deal. I got them. I'll never forget. The committee called me about the Olympics. Sir, will you call the head of the Olympic Committee in Sweden or something? I said, yeah, but — and I was President-elect. I said, why don't you let the President do it? He won't take their call. Oh, that's nice. That was — President Obama. Has anyone ever heard of him? He won't take their call. They called me up. They said, would you do that? I said, well, why isn't Obama there? He's the president. He won't take their call. He won't call them. And I said, I'll do it. But it doesn't sort of make sense. I'm elect. I'm not president yet. But I'll do it. So I talked to him. I couldn't get him off the phone. He was so desperate to speak to me because he kept trying to call and call and call, and nobody would talk to him. When he finally spoke to me, I couldn't get him off the phone. He was so happy to speak to somebody. And I got the Olympics. And I got the World Cup here. So we're going to have some good stuff. Good stuff. Good for our children, too. But this is what we must do to restore our country to greatness. The USA is a mess. Our economy is crashing. Inflation is out of control. China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea have formed together as a menacing and destructive coalition. Our currency is crashing and will soon no longer be the world standard, which will be the single greatest defeat our country has suffered in 200 years, it won't happen with me, not even a chance. Just like Russia would never have invaded Ukraine, as I said. And just like China would not even have a thought about raiding Taiwan. I told them, don't do it. If you took the five worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as crooked Joe Biden and the Biden administration have done. We are a failing nation. 
We are a nation in decline. You all know this. I hate to say it. I hate to say it. But we're a nation in decline. And now these radical left lunatics want to interfere with our elections by using law enforcement. It's totally corrupt, and we can never let it happen. This is our final battle. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists. We will throw off the sick political class that truly hates our country. We will rout the fake news media. We will take back our schools. We will defeat Joe Biden. And propelled by the spirit of July 4th, 1776, we will win a righteous victory on November 5th, 2024. Again, the single most important election in the history of our country. So I want to say thank you very much to the great moms of our country. Together, we will work and we will make America great again. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you all very much.